Tifu by missing all the signs for 9 hours. This did, in fact, happen today. I'm on mobile, so I apologize for formatting errors. It's a long one, and there's a TL, doctor at the end. I am an engineering student, and one of my professors was holding a grade review today. Basically, you could watch him grade your final exam and make sure he entered all your grades right. It's extremely popular, so I went in knowing there would be a good long wait. I show up at 10 a.m., thinking I was early enough to grab a good spot. Oh boy, was I wrong. I was 35th in line, and reviews take about 10 to 15 minutes per person. I got out my notes and started studying for tomorrow's final exam, figuring I'd make good use of my time. A minute later, one of my female classmates, Marissa, not her real name, shows up. We worked closely in statics a few semesters ago, but I had a girlfriend at the time and was not interested in her. We have the same classes, so we started studying for the same final together. The hours were on. We studied as much as humanly possible, and we're both sick of it. Around 2 p.m., I break out my turkey sub for lunch. Leaving the line to get food means losing your spot, and I had planned well. She hadn't, and only had a snack. We split my sub and her bag of gummy bears. After that, we talked about our personal lives. How we'd broken up with our significant others at the end of last spring semester. How we both loved stuff. Star Wars and Studio Ghibli. How we lived one block away from each other right off campus. Our friendship was pretty well rekindled. 5 p.m. rolls around and the professor steps out to eat dinner. Since there's a half hour of no line movement, Marissa decides to take a quick nap, tired out from studying and not eating much for lunch. We sat on the linoleum floor and she laid her head on my shoulder. A bony as banana. I have no idea how that could ever be comfortable. Dot. At 5.30, the professor comes back. He tells everyone after Marissa to leave and come back the next day, since he wouldn't be able to get through them today and didn't want to make them keep waiting. Now we're at the end of the line together since everyone else took off. We talked for a little while longer as the line shortened. Around 6 p.m., she had to use the bathroom. She grabbed my phone and made a contact for herself, telling me to text her if I went in to see the professor so she could hurry back. My friends just ahead in line, Josh and Zach, not their real names, were giving me all kinds of wiggly eyebrows, but I ignored them. She comes back after about 15 minutes and we resume conversation. We talk about our second final exam tomorrow, structural analysis, and she admits that she can't draw an influence line for a beam. I spent a half hour teaching it to her, with her squishing up next to me and leaning in over the paper all the time. At last, it's just me, her, and Zach waiting. She starts talking about how she doesn't feel confident about structural analysis and that she needs more help. I, idiot that I am, try to teach her more right there. She says it'll take more time and that she wanted to see me after we got our grades reviewed. I suggested the library, but she said it was closed, since finals were supposed to end today but got extended due to a snowstorm earlier in the week and the library schedule had remained constant. Then, she invited me to come to her apartment to help her with structural analysis. Reddit, let me tell you, I was tired after studying and socializing for eight and a half hours and just wanted to go home and sleep. I didn't realize what she meant, and I declined. Zach went in for his review. She kept at it, saying how she really needed help and that I was a better teacher than the professor, definitely not true. Professor Labarge is awesome. She took off her sweater because it was too hot in the civil engineering office. Dutifully, I looked away until she'd pulled her t-shirt back down. Zach stumbled out of the grade review at 6.45 and I headed in. It was uneventful. When I got out, she asked me to wait for her, but I said no. I was tired and hangry, and she seemed so pushy to me. I would I want to give up a good night's sleep before my final exam to teach a girl I knew a year ago structural analysis. I headed out and saw Zach waiting for me. While we walked to the exit, I told him all about how Marissa was being so demanding and wanted me to go to her apartment and tutor her. We were outside before he said it, dude, Marissa really likes you. I laughed and brushed it off, but he ran through the list of things she'd done today. The library was still open, and the structural analysis TA is his older brother, and Marissa is doing great in that class. I was convinced. Knowing my mistake, I ran back to the engineering office, but it was too late. She was gone, and the lights were off. I headed for my apartment, 
cursing my boundless stupidity. Fortunately, I still have her number, and we have two finals together tomorrow. Maybe we can study for the second after the first one is finished smile. TL, doctor, spent nine hours in line for university. Totally missed all the hints my female classmate was dropping and went home alone after rejecting her invitation to study at her apartment. Friend told me afterward what an idiot I was, and I realized too late. She's totally into you. Good luck tomorrow man. Update tomorrow please this will be hella funny. He probs missed his shot, she's gonna run into an old flame tonight and rekindle with him instead. Up screwed the pooch here. Well at least when you die alone you'll have this memory to look back and cringe upon late at night. Lol, been there. Tifu by eating too much Carolina Reaper beef jerky. TL, doctor today I ate an entire pack of Carolina Reaper beef jerky and spent the next 6 hours in agony while turning my coconut into an active volcano. To preface this, it actually did happen today and I'm still experiencing this zucchini up as I type this. I just got back home last night from spending the last week visiting family in Tampa. On the last night of my trip, we all went to this big Christmas light show where they also have craft items from small vendors to buy. My brother bought some amazing cheeses and I bought a variety of beef jerky. I absolutely love spicy foods. It's gotten to the point of adding various spices and peppers to nearly every dish that I eat. So back to the jerky. I bought a simple whiskey barbecue for my father, a habanero spiced one. I wanted a light heat, and then to my excitement, a pack of Carolina Reaper jerky. The packs are 4 ounces, 113 grams, each. Side note, habaneros are rated at a max of 350,000 Scoville heat units, while Carolina Reapers max out at 2,200,000 SHU. Once we drove back to my parents' home, my brother and I tried a small piece of the Carolina Reaper, not so bad, had a bit of milk to wash it down. Great taste to it might I add. Fast forward to 11am CST this morning, I'm back at my home. Since I've been on vacation for a week, my work had fallen fairly far behind and I had a lot of reports to run to get everything rolling again. I work from home about 50% of the time and today was one of those days. I'm sitting at my computer running reports and skimming through them when my stomach starts mumbling feed me fool. The closest thing to me is this beef jerky. While trying to decide if I wanted habanero or reapers, I reminded myself of how yummy the reapers tasted and it honestly wasn't that bad when I had a small bite the night before. Being as efficient as possible, I continue to skim through my reports while munching on this delicious beef jerky, pausing only to take a sip of water, not helpful, and blow my nose. Before I know it, I've eaten the entire pack of jerky. My mouth is on fire, but honestly nothing I can't handle. This was about 11.30. At exactly 4.10, my disrespect for the world's hottest pepper had begun to expose an extreme lack of judgment on my part. It started with a light stabbing in my stomach, as if a bee was stinging me once every 20 seconds or so. By 4.30 I was in the fetal position on the couch sweating like a nun at a cucumber farm. The little bee stings have turned into a hot knife slowing slicing through my intestines, followed by one of those plastic hand clapper toys smacking the wound the knife just made. I drag myself off the couch and walk hunched over to the bathroom several times over the next couple hours to try and expel the demon that is reaping through my body, but no, we had just begun. Around 9 o'clock one of my bathroom trips find yields results. It's just a matter of time now and this will finally end, I tell myself. In a matter of seconds, my relief quickly turns into Drogon torching my banana as if I am in a reenactment of Daenerys burning King's Landing. It is currently 10.33 and I think I am through it finally. I've been left with a feeling of icy hot, mixed with smoldering hot coals in place of my exit hole and I can only lay on the couch again, shaking from the, the exorcism and sweat. This has been a grueling 6. 5 hours, but I will pull through this as a man who has learned to never disrespect the world's hottest pepper again. I fell into a burning ring of fire I went down, down, down and the flames went higher. And it burns, burns, burns the ring of fire the ring of fire. Sweating like a nun at a cucumber farm. That's a new one I'll have to save. All I can think is that this should have been a Florida man story.
They sell this stuff at a local outlet and I've always been curious to try. With my stomach issues it'll either clear them up right or end me. Either way is fine. Don't complain up. You get to enjoy the spiciness twice for the same cost. So many more times than twice. Tifu by listening to my friend's delusional rant without realizing he was schizophrenic. Obligatory didn't happen today, rather a few months ago. I had this friend from the church I used to attend, and we'd get together and play basketball and smoke from time to time. Over time he grew to be one of my closest friends, but we grew apart as I moved away for college and I lost contact for about a year. Couple of months ago, he messages me on Instagram saying, Hey man, so something happened to me and nobody believes me. He explained to me that he attended a music festival with a girl, and that this girl's father was the owner of the venue or something like that. He told me this girl told him about a secret society that owned Hollywood and the music industry, and that all famous people were secretly worshipping Satan and sacrificing people to the devil himself, he even went so far as to claim Juice World was the Antichrist. He told me that when she told him this, People with guns began shooting people left and right and that he escaped, but they were coming for him. Being his friend and having no reason to believe there was a problem, I told him I supported him and believed him, and begged him to go to the police. When he told me the police were already involved and didn't believe him, and that he was sent to a psychiatric hospital against his will, I soon realized something wasn't right. After doing some asking around, I found out he had been diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic, and that by my supporting his delusions he was trying to resist taking his, court-ordered, medication. I didn't know what to do, I unknowingly caused him to slide back into his delusions and resist treatment. Finally, now a few months later, he messaged me telling me he was sorry. His treatment is going very well, and he thanked me for being there for him when he needed me, even if he just thought he needed me. This whole experience honestly left me so drained, but I'm just happy he's safe. TL, Dr. My Buddy thought Juice World was trying to kill him, turns out my buddy was schizophrenic. He's all good now. FYI weed is super bad for folks with psychotic disorders. For some unknown reasons, it contributes to early onset of psychotic episodes and seems to contribute to the severity of such disorders. Research isn't clear as to how or why, however for those with a predisposition for schizophrenia spectrum disorders, it is best avoided. Make sure he keeps taking his meds. A lot of the times, people's pills work, then they decide they are cured now and they stop taking them. You have to keep taking them. As somebody who dabbles a lot in the schizophrenia spectrum, you did the right thing. There is a sort of innate fear that something is very wrong, outside of the delusions, so having somebody who you feel like you can trust and who will at least listen to you is a big deal. This isn't a banana up at all. Your buddy thought of you as somebody he could trust when the world didn't make a lot of sense and he was right. You didn't really cheesecake up, you just supported him differently than he needed. And yeah, it can be draining to support someone who's mentally ill, imagine how much more drained they feel, so cut yourself some slack. For being a good friend, keep being there if you can because it can be really hard to keep good friends when you're ill. I'm sure he is a good person. 